if we have settlements on Mars in, by that period of time and humans or a variation of the humans are living on the surface of Mars, then they're going to have to look at the possibility that they're going to have a debris of me meteorites crashing down on top of them. A NASA mission that knocked an asteroid off course in 2022 created debris that scientists believe will punch craters in Mars. Now, the asteroid posed no threat to Earth, but the aim of the mission was to demonstrate that dangerous incoming rocks can be deflected by smashing into them. Let's talk again to our favourite space expert, Andrew Lound. Very good afternoon from me, Andrew. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Thank you yes. for having me back. Oh, no, well, we love talking to you. So, oh, look, now you see you're in vision and you're wearing the fantastic astronaut's hoodie. And behind you, what is the set? Uh, that's Dimorphos. That's, that's the object which Dart crashed into. And as you can see, it's actually classed as a rubble pile. This is a, a moon of an asteroid called Didymus. It's technically called a binary asteroid system. And the idea was that DART would crash into this object and change its trajectory as it goes around its its uh, parent, if you like, going around Didymus. And as you can see, you can see from the picture here, it's it's got boulders and all sorts of things on the top. And when the object, cra when the spacecraft crashed into it, it blasted material away from it, including a debris field which trails this pair of asteroids like a like a comet's tail. But it also blew some of the boulders off, which in themselves, of course, are, are a separate group of objects which are traveling with it as it orbits the sun. And a paper that's been published has suggested that there's a there's 37 boulders that got blasted up, uh, varying in size to quite quite a few meters across, and that in around 6,000 years time, a group of these are, are possibly going to enter the Martian atmosphere and crash down on its surface. So, is that something that really wasn't foreseen at all, or it was foreseen and everyone just went, well, I mean, that's just what's going to happen, collateral yeah. damage. Yeah, this this was something that wasn't quite expected like this. I think the surprise that came out, and which is why the test was there, was that to find out exactly how, whether, first of all, you could deflect an object, which was the first trick. Um, but the explosion and, and the impact was far greater than I think anybody expected. And, and images from the Hubble telescope had a look at it and said, wow, the debris field that's been blasted up here is far more than expected. And the whole point of the test was to find out exactly what the implications are. And this this group of rubble isn't going to risk the Earth at all, but it could actually uh, crash onto onto Mars, and and it could put an impact crater about three hundred meters across, which is no mean mean feat at all. Um, when you're going to impact on an object like this, there's a lot of factors you've got to put into it. No two asteroids are ever the same. Some will be very dense. Some won't be so dense. They'll be rubble piles and may have ice underneath them, very similar to comets in some respects. And therefore, the type of impact, I mean, it impacted about 22,500 kilometres an hour, quite a fast impact. Um, so you're not really sure what sort of thing is going to happen. And the whole point of this paper that's been published is pointing out that when we do it again, if we have to do it, for instance, if something's going to crash into us, that we have to deflect it away, that we have to look at the, the implications of this. But some people have said that if you're going to mine asteroids, you're going to have to blast chunks of the asteroids out. And again, we're going to have to think about the debris that comes out of it and where that's going to impact. I mean, in the short term, there is no risk to Mars, for instance. I mean, it's going to be 6,000 years time. But just think, if we have settlements on Mars in, by that period of time and humans or a variation of the humans are living on the surface of Mars, then they're going to have to look at the possibility that they're going to have a debris of me meteorites crashing down on top of them. Right. I mean, it's fascinating stuff, isn't it? I mean, I can't help but think, given the examples that we have on this planet mm. of you know who wins out it tends to be you know the most powerful uh brutal male actually at the moment and i can't see that changing in space i mean if if our planet is threatened then are we really going to think about the consequences for life on a planet that is yet to be inhabited above mm. the life here they're the dangerous choices you actually have to take. And I, I was involved in it, the uh, Space University in Bremen many, many years ago when these kind of decisions were having to be put to you. And the, the famous one is there's a truck full of soldiers driving around a mountain with a very narrow passage way so there's no room on either side you either drive around the mountain and it's over the cliff one side and the wall on the other and a baby walks in front of the truck what do you do 
Do you drive off the cliff or do you drive through the child on the road? And although it seems a crazy scenario, these decisions do have to be taken. Um, and I think you're right. There's a situation where there's an asteroid heading towards the Earth. You have to make that snap decision. Six billion people on the Earth. There is a risk of possible extinction. What do you do? And, of course, blowing the asteroid into a million pieces won't work because those million pieces will shower down eventually onto the Earth anyway. So all you have to do is try to deflect it, which is what this experiment did and showed it could be done. These are horrible decisions that have to be taken at some point. And at the time when we did that scenario, we thought, is it likely this could ever be done? And, of course, a few years later, it, the decision had to be made. When a passenger liner was being hijacked, it might be on its way to the White House. The president made a decision, you might have to shoot that down. It turned out that the passengers took that decision for everybody anyway. But these are decisions that have to be taken, life and death decisions. And we have we have to pay people who we think are smart enough to come up with the answers. Yeah, and do you think they're the right people, Andrew? That's the problem. Oh, you want me to make the political statement whether I think the right people? No, I don't. I don't think we have. We don't have people with who have got scientific thought making decisions about science, and that is, concerns me a great deal. People who have the training, have the inclination to make scientific decisions, and they're deciding the future of science in many cases in this country. Whether it's green tech, whether it's space exploration, whether it's general materials on the Earth itself, uh, and that's the danger. We don't have scientific politicians. There are accountants and their lawyers and their two groups of people who none of us trust at the best of times anyway and we're making them make life or death decisions about us especially in science I find that very frustrating. Andrew it's always a pleasure to talk to you I hope we speak again that space expert right. Andrew Lound. What about the about what happened they attempt to sort of head off an asteroid in in mid space which was in its way successful but in a not precisely as intended debris was caused by a 2022 nasa mission that that was meant to save earth from the possibility of an asteroid strike the bits of the asteroid are now heading on their way to punch craters in mars the asteroid was no great threat to Earth. The aim was to demonstrate dangerous incoming rocks could be deflected by smashing into them. Jackie Goddard is, has been following it all for the time. Hello, Jackie. Hello, John. It was quite a feat, though, to hit an asteroid with any kind of missile. It really was. And let's say, first of all, that DART mission in 2022, the double asteroid re re redirect mission, was declared a huge success. NASA did know that whatever, if even if there were unintended uh, consequences and things flying off it, that there would not be a prospect of those uh, of that debris coming to Earth. What the unintended consequence that they hadn't factored in uh, now is, is that some of those, uh, the boulders that were kind of blasted off the, uh, the surface of the asteroid, which they slammed a, a an uncrewed spacecraft into to uh, to see if it's possible to kind of knock it off its orbit, and they found it was. Some of those pieces are now um, it, it likely to drift over thousands of years um, to Mars and then become meteorites and impact the surface of Mars. Yeah. So now, is that important in terms of uh, humanity? There's no risk to humanity, but let's you know factor in at six thousand years and again uh, more strike more meteor strikes in. Uh, 15,000 years' time, who knows what will be on Mars. The yes. prediction is that those boulders would actually impact the surface and wouldn't become airbursts. They would survive re-entry and hit the ground. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose in theory we could say in whatever it is, 6,000 years, there could be all sorts. There could be a city on Mars and this stuff could hit them and it would be it would be the fault of NASA today. But that, I guess the odds of that are just so astronomically unlikely, literally astronomically unlikely. Well, you know, tell Elon Musk that um, because that's one of his primary goals is to uh, establish cities on Mars. And, mm. and even NASA's, NASA's goal is in the 2030s to be able to send humans to Mars um, with a longer term goal of actually having folks living and working on another planet. Mm. Um, other other uh, consequences of these boulders that are it's 37 boulders, essentially, that are now uh, kind of orbiting the asteroid. And they could become challenges navigationally for the HERA space spacecraft, which is a European Space Agency um, robotic spacecraft that's being sent up to this asteroid in 2026 to survey the debris and to, to establish um, more of the data that, that is needed to, uh, to, to, to learn from this, um, mm. 
uh, dark mission. And so it's, it's, it's not going to be a danger to the spacecraft, but it is going to involve some, uh, some tricky maneuvering. And a, and a further um, consequence is potentially if the asteroid mining industry ever gets off the ground, which is tipped to be the first ever trillion dollar industry, if anybody can actually make it work, um, sending uh, robotic spacecraft up to mine asteroids for precious metals and for water. Um, again, having things flying around these things and knowing how, if you impact um, an asteroid, you can affect it. Um, these are all very important lessons that have been yeah. uh, learned in this new study.